But even before the glycolytic would be the phospholytic, which is that creatine phosphate shuttle yeah. system. And so when we, when I actually think of very acute power, even before glycolytic is the phospholytic. And so to me, that is certainly a reason to prioritize creatine, but, but just you brought that topic up, Mark. So I can't let it go too quickly because it is such a, it's such a beautiful thing to see the evolution of creatine, but even it's funny because now we're seeing like both where we have creatine and BHB, each of which was discovered in a particular realm or, or appreciated in a particular realm to say that a better way. BHB has long been appreciated in the neurological central nervous system brain realm. Creatine has long been appreciated in the muscle exercise performance realm. And now we've been able to see them each sort of step past the other where there's the explosion in research showing, looking at ketones and muscle function, which is, which was very, that's much newer. You know, you, you started the conversation by mentioning the evidence with epilepsy. We've had studies in humans for over a hundred years. Yes. For a century documenting the effects of ketogenic diets on things like epilepsy and migraines. So very obvious, overt brain things. And then we've had evidence for decades looking at the benefits of creatine in muscle. And now they're sort of crossing each other while giving each other a high five or like the scene. <laughs> it's like that ending scene from, from like with Arnold and his bicep, you know, gripping the other guy's arm uh, yeah. from, from a predator. Um, where it's like the glute, the ketone and the creatine are e giving each other a big firm hand clasp on their way past each other, where now the latest research is showing the remarkable benefits of creatine in, in the brain and yes. with cognition and neuroinflammation from sleep deprivation and all of this new research looking at the use of ketones in muscle and performance. So there is, I, I don't mean to kind of hijack the question, but in my view, there is a beautiful synergy to to use Rob's term with with the one plus one equals three. That mm -hmm. to me, an optimal use is to enhance the reliance on the phospholytic system by really taking advantage of creatine in any of its forms, and then to preserve the glycolytic capacity and even enhance the overall mitochondrial uh, milieu. By, by promoting mitochondrial biogenesis with the presence of the ketones. But maybe one final comment on the mitochondria, um, that there's, it even goes beyond just the, the promoting of more mitochondria. Yeah, more mitochondria is going to be a good thing, but we also actually change the very nature of the mitochondria. Most people don't appreciate that mitochondria go through a very dynamic cycle of fusion and then fission. In fact, very often mitochondria are in this very separated state. Uh, in fact, the word mitos is from the Greek word for thread, because when you look at mitochondria under a, 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 like a fluorescent microscope, mm -hmm. they're long stringy little things. Um, so they can, they can divide and they can fuse together with the presence of BHB. There's a much greater time spent in fusion. And when mitochondria have undergone a fusion state, they are much more efficient and much more capable of producing ATP with less oxidative stress byproducts produced at the same time.